Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to apply a single color per triangle. So if you're just drawing a triangle, it would just be one color. But if you are drawing a, let's say, a square, a rectangle, which is what this code is from. So this is from the Drawing a Quad tutorial. So feel free to get the code from here, but it can be applied to any sort of shape, essentially. I also recommend checking out the code, even though we're gonna sort of go over it, over it pretty quickly, but checking out the code from, and the video, applying color to shapes, because it's essentially an extension of that. So, first of all, what we need to do is, currently, the way we are drawing quad is using this little method here, right here, GL, dot triangles and we specify you know four vertices and it does all the drawing order for us and we are using indices we no longer need indices and the reason is because we will actually just specify each triangles you know essential you know vertices so in this case if this is two triangles let's say split diagonally like that that would actually be two separate vertices that will be for this triangle and then also for this triangle so there'll be one two three so for that triangle and one two three for that triangle so that'll be a total of six vertices and what you need to do is just order these so in the case you know if it's a rectangle uh, we want that one first, so we essentially want the fourth one, the second one, second one, and then the first one. Then we want the fourth one again, which is number three. Then we want that one, and then we want and this one here. Okay, so let me reload this. Okay, so indices is not defined because we removed that. We need to change things up a bit. So I will just hard code this for now. Uh, again, indices is not defined. Line 58 either. Where we're looking. Also, we don't need any of the index buffer stuff. So we can get rid of that. And we do use this here. So we can get rid of it here as well. Okay, so currently does not work, that is fine. And what we need to do is create an array for the colors. So var colors equals, and in here you need a color per vertex. And again, it has to be for each individual one because we are coloring each triangle separately. So what I want is one triangle to be colored green and one triangle to be colored blue. So we need three sets of vertices per triangle. So 0 0.0, 1.0, 0.0. So this is one set of vertices. So you know, you know, RGB. So that is green, green, green. So that's one triangle. And then the next one we want is blue. So if I paste that, and blue would be this again. You know, feel free to modify the colors to a color that you you know desire that you want. That's you know easily doable. Next, what we need to do is to do, 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 do after the vertex buffer, we need to create a color buffer. So we need to say var color buffer. We could gl dot create buffer. GL dot bind buffer GL dot array buffer color buffer. Again, I'll cover this more in the applying a color to a shape video, but essentially very similar to what you do with a vertex buffer or any other sort of buffer, really. Uh, where do we go to now? We need to do GL dot buffer data GL dot array buffer new float 32 array colors gl.static draw 
and there we go okay so next we need to modify the vertex code so this position that's fine because it's still drawing a triangle there's nothing wrong with that but we need to essentially take in another attribute so i'm going to copy and paste this and this one is going to be called color we also need something called a varying variable and this will be passed in from the vertex shader to the fragment shader where the coloring is done for vex3 v color and the only thing left is here we need to say v color equals color that has been passed in so we can't pass in stuff directly to the fragment shader it has to be done you know through the vertex shader and then to the fragment shader in the fragment shader first of all because we are bringing in data we need to specify the precision uh, high p float um, actually probably could get away with low float as well and medium float let's do medium float probably could get it actually low float should be fine because it's just colors colors low float is fine for something like uh, i believe textures is medium p better basically the precision i think high p is oh, i still can't remember but you know always try the highest one then just lower down till to a point that it doesn't look good anymore and uh, where was we okay so we need to do that varying line again Gotta put a plus here. Now that has been passed through, and that's automatically handled. So instead of specifying a color of black, we're gonna specify V color, which was passed through. And what's next? And after the coordinate stuff, where are we looking? Before the GL color, clear color, we need to do var color. Have I used that term before? Color. Don't think so. Don't think so. I just want to mention no complications or no, no complications, you know, conflicts. Shader, program, color. And now we need to do gl.vertex actual pointer. Again, this is very similar to what we've done with the coordinate stuff above. So let's specify color gl.float false zero zero and next gl.enable vertex attribute array and we are enabling the color array and then finally if we go down instead of doing draw elements all you want is gl.draw arrays gl.triangles Zero comma six. Yeah, so there we go. If I refresh, that is not the way I wanted it to look. So something has clearly gone wrong. But let's have a look. Uh, let's make sure. Look all good to me. Just making sure the coordinates are all correct. They look fine to me. Okay, so let's have a look at the colors. Because it's black and not blue. Like, there's some green there, which is good. That's correct. But there's no blue at all which is strange okay so let's have a look let's go to high p so it's probably not that then so fragment shader, uh, vertex shader, three. Uh, 
vertex at three pointer color free geode of flow to It's not this one. Okay, so what about my domestic? It's gonna be something really simple about here. That is, there's no errors, it's not crashing. It's a good sign. Let me literally just copy and paste the code that I did before. Because this is what it should look like. Mm -hmm. and this is what it does look like. Okay, so let me copy up to the unbind buffer. Is that still there? Could that be? Hmm, that doesn't look like it. I basically have that there anyway. Let's, see, let's just copy this. Which is just before the collab file and it is this. No, that does not fix it. That means the problem is later on. Let's copy that up to the fragment shader. So that to the fragment shader. That did not fix it either. So, oh, there must be a more late. Let's literally copy the rest of it. Yeah, it's gonna be something simple. Mm -hmm. so there we go. So, for starters, that should not be fun anymore. So let's do it to the coordinate part so from frog shader to chord. Somewhere down here to go from chord to just before clear color. So it is in chord to just before clear color. Mm. I see the problem. Oh, I forgot to add this. Forgot to bind the buffer. That. There we go, and it's done. So we got the green and the blue triangle. So the first set of coordinates is for this one. The second set is for this triangle, and this, you know, green, 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 is for these coordinates here. And then blue is for these coordinates and you can apply this to essentially 3d shape of multiple triangles probably best if you use some sort of loop system and you know to help go over over it all but yeah that is it how you that is how you apply a individual color to each triangle of a shape pretty cool stuff if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video